What's going on, everybody? Eric Winquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Liddy's Links. Likes and locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize for never great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. My other headphones got dinged up, and so like I've got these, and I'm feeling different. I'm feeling feeling like a new person. Also, the stubble looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> Hi, all three ladies watching this program. I love you. But anyway, we've got Caesar Sportsbook here on hand, my friends. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be firing that up here. Uh, because well, You bet 50 bucks, you get yourself $250. You can use that in NFL. We've got uh, everything going on in golf. I'm going to be on a golf show tomorrow. We're going to be talking a little golf. Uh, getting ready for the Ryder Cup here very, very shortly here, too. Uh, going to be betting on that. Go USA, minus 125. That's a little bit too short. But either way, you can fire up any of those by betting $50 at Caesar Sportsbook in the link below getting yourself five $50 bonus bets to be able to fire immediately you'll get one $50 bet and then one every single Monday thereafter only if you're 21 and over and if you have a gambling problem please call 1-800-GAMBLER but I'm sweating Boston like crazy Rodon has eight strikeouts in three innings he's left five on base giving up four hits already I don't even know what is up or down or left or right and Cutter Crawford got out of a jam himself in that first inning but up one nothing good guys need that one to get through because I ended up two units on that one fired it up on Lindy's Locks update uh Carlos Rodon strikes out a mil whatever as long as Boston wins Boston get it done that's all that I ask of you and then hopefully we can keep hitting home runs like we have it in an alarming pace and just do all the other things. Anyway, we have 15 games to talk about. We have one morning baseball game, some afternoon baseball, and some evening baseball. The best. Wednesday, when you get that solo game as opposed to having all of them in the early morning, love it. Lots of opportunities to bet. And hey, I'm going to have Lindy's Locks update for you coming in the afternoon a little bit earlier just so that you have more time to react to it. And uh, yeah, we got stuff. We got some goodness on this card throughout the day. So looking forward to it. So is producer Jacob. Look at this guy. He's stoked. He's ready. Let's get to the picks. Our day begins with my Minnesota Twins taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. And what a unique spot because, well, plus 105. Dallas Keuchel has been serviceable as a big league pitcher so far this season. That's a little strange to say out loud because he was dust and to dust he shall return later. But right now, finding ways to be effective, sub 4-8 ERA, 1.41 whip. I'm not saying that he's good. I'm just saying that he's been better than I would expect, especially because most of that has been in two outings, one against Texas on the road, one against Philly on the road. You take those out of consideration. Do you know his ERA at home? I'm going to tell you because that's my job. 1.27 in 21 and a third innings at home 1.27 ERA I don't even know what to believe anymore now Tampa Bay once upon a time with Wander Franco in this lineup much more imposing against lefties he'll never be in any lineup again except for maybe a prison lineup it's not even a joke it's just sad in reality and Fuck that guy. But anyway, we've got Dallas Keuchel here on the other side. Well, Taj Bradley on the other side. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Happy. No, I'm not happy. It's disgusting. Anyway, Taj Bradley here looking at the Tampa Bay Rays, friends. Uh, definitely not the spot to go out of our way to pick on him in any kind of a crazy way. But I will say he's given up enough power to righties that I think it's worth consideration. Against lefties, mowing dudes down at a 33.5 percent clip he faces a little bit more than them it's been a pretty even split but only a 130 xi so against righties though 24.6 percent k rate in his short and big league career but the big thing that just sticks out like a sore thumb 247 expected iso 297 actual iso you know who has a really high iso right now for the minnesota twins who hits from the right side his name's royce lewis Royce Lewis is going to hit a ball so far against Taj Bradley. I mean, that's, the, that's the goal. Again, it's not saying that something's going to happen. It's can I get the number that makes it worth it to try to find out. If you get better than plus 300 on, on Royce Lewis in this spot, you're just taking him to the moon, and it's going to be beautiful, and we're going to have a really fun morning. But wish I had a plan this game for you to be able to sweat throughout the day. Instead, let's just sweat Royce Lewis hitting a bomb, shall we? Speaking of bombs, heading to the Colorado Rockies, hosting the Cubbies, Coors Field in the afternoon. You know what that means, a little bit warmer, a little bit more enticing on the old bats, even though it's never exactly bad at night either. It's just a fantastic ballpark to be invested in. You got Jamison Tyon taking on Ty. And over the course of this season, we've been picking on Ty 
because he's not very good. He's not 45.1% hard hit percentage, 386 X Woba, just a 13.2% K rate. And now he's got to tee off against a Cubs lineup. Good luck. They're going to tee off on him. Ty anyway, Jamison Tyon on the other side. Not exactly good himself. 43 expected slugging, 268 expected batting average, 346 X Woba. And then you're adding guys like Nolan Jones to the top of the lineup. Brian McMahon, another guy on the left side that looks good to me. Aliris Montero, also 44.4% hard hit percentage. Not exactly nothing in that department, even though 36.4% K rate. But you're not getting any strikeouts from Tyon either. 21.5%, and I kind of buried the lead. Charlie Blackman, Brenton Doyle, Elias Diaz, Hunter Goodman's been pretty good. And then, of course, Chris Bryant's back in this lineup. So, yeah, maybe... We just try to get a little contrarian here on the plus one and a half side of things. When you have a larger run expectation, creates an opportunity for us to possibly fire something up here in some kind of a capacity that might look otherwise silly. But this is by far, by far, by far, not the silliest play on this card. So here you go. Colorado plus one and a half, even money. Think it's the right side to be on here, even though Chicago, I totally expect them to put up runs. Maybe you combine it, but at 12, probably just to stay away keep that money for another day hey i'm a little bit mad at kyle harrison a little bit mad it's okay i understand bro i understand you have your infinity percent k rate at triple a you come to the big league level i invest on you on five and a half five and a half five and a half the books keep hooking five and a half he goes for 11 strikeouts in his second outing it's beautiful and i combine kyle harrison with the money line there on that last outing against Colorado in order to get a little bit of a booster in there. Feel a little bit frisky, you know? Kyle Harrison loses it for it by the hook again. He's now had five strikeouts in three of his four big league outies. The southpaws are really, really good. And obviously the strikeouts are tougher to come by against Cleveland, against any handedness, that's for sure. Uh, the southpaw on the season, again, he's going to strike out bats, but then this Cleveland team, they avoid them. Just a 18.8% K rate. That's fourth best at avoiding them in baseball, albeit with just an 81 WRC plus. So they don't bring a whole lot to the table. And Josh Bell is no longer wearing that uniform. He's in Miami and uh, that's a better place for him. Maybe get to play a little postseason ball. Miami's in a weird spot. I do have a play from that one though. Anyway, Cleveland on the other side of this, Logan Allen. I like the stuff. We've been talking about him throughout the, the spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. 3.68 ERA, 1.34 whip overall this season. Just, just a good, serviceable big league pitcher. They're going to probably try to limit his innings now that the AL Central is pretty firmly in my Minnesota Twins grasp. So I don't really think there's any kind of a reason to go out of your way to back him from a K perspective here in San Francisco, although it's a great pitching environment. Afternoon game ratchets it up a little bit, looking like it's going to be 76 degrees in San Francisco here. Let me double check. 76 degrees in San Francisco here. So there you go. Fire that up if you want to see some runs, but I don't. I really, really don't. I want to see Kyle Harrison come through in this regard, and here's how I'm looking to do it. I'm not going to deal with the San Francisco Giants trying to win this one, mainly because I do think Logan Allen's got some good stuff, but Kyle Harrison's got the strikeout stuff. So we're going to take six strikeouts. God forbid, God forbid he falls short for us here with the under of eight and a half. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it, but I'm leaning because I need to see the K prop. That didn't run. The Halos, the Mariners up in T-Mobile. Not going to expect a whole lot of runs here in this one. You got Luis Castillo for sure going to be the starter on the Seattle side. And I think Chase Silseth ends up getting the start here. We haven't seen him in a long time for the Angels. Uh, it's been nearly a month here. Well, actually, it's more like three weeks, but uh, it hasn't been good overall from, from like a strikeout perspective by any means. 53 Ks. However, one outing. He had 12 strikeouts against Seattle. A little bit of an outlier considering five is his next highest amount that he's had in any single outing all season long. Now, he was a bullpen arm transferred into this starter type role. I don't think we're going to get a lot of length out of him here. <laughs> But Luis Castillo here, we're looking at him to do kind of the same thing. And this is a theme that I have throughout the show. I didn't try to do this. This isn't something I went out of my way to say, hey, this is what I want to do. But Luis Castillo gets a pretty good spot here going up against a Halos team that Shohei Otani 
he's just going to get scratched every day now. They'll say, hey, come to the ballpark. Oh, he's not playing. Hey, buy ticket. He's he's not going to play again. Seattle Star. Sorry. Just keep scratching him. Anyway, 24.5% K rate against righties here on the season. I could see this number being six and a half, but to make it a theme, just like Harrison, I expect his K prop to be five and a half like it has forever. If it's four and a half, I'm very scared for what I'm going to do there. But I'm looking at Luis Castillo's six Ks in addition to just be a little bit of a booster to bring this thing above the plus money mark because I expect Seattle Moneyline to be pretty decent favorites here. Chase Silseth against the Mariners. Yeah. So it's going to be reliant upon where that K prop lands. Another lean here, but another pitcher. Best pitcher's park in baseball, even though it plays pretty neutral for the homers. I don't know how many times I can say that. Probably more. We still have at least a month of baseball. Two months of baseball. Talking it. NBA Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks is coming fast and furious, baby. And just like there are 84 Fast and the Furious movies, I am doing all of the sports. Just four. Four, four sports. I'm, I'm going to cover four sports. For those who give a shit, NBA, MLB, NFL, PGA, those are the four sports that I'm going to cover for you in the Lindy's department. Anything else would be disingenuous, although daddy's been firing some UFC on his own. <laughs> I'm working on the model. I'm not going to start giving out picks in it until it's like a profitable thing. And I'm all of like nine months into this thing. It's been decently profitable, but it's got some work. It's got some kinks. It needs some work. I didn't bet Sean Strickland on Saturday. Just throwing it out there. I didn't bet on Asanya either. Who's going to lay 500 on that? 700? Close. Set minus 700? Oops. Something happened. You all saw producer Jacob. Let's go! <laughs> he he does exist. They do exist. The Christmas commercial with the M&Ms. <laughs> uh, Santa? Uh-huh. Anyway, we've got Pom Pom Rom Rom going up against Kyle Gibson here in this one in Baltimore. I'm just so happy you saw the beautiful, lovely face of producer Jacob. Don't you dare edit that. Don't you dare edit that. Don't. None of that. I don't want any of it. Okay. That's my guy. Anyway, Drew Rom, feeling pretty good about the strikeout stuff at the big league level. Just kidding. 12.8% K rate. He is terrible. 11.6% walk rate. 43.1% hard hit percentage and taking on a Baltimore team that uh, a little bit surprised that this ended up being the closing line number. But here's where I have a little bit of an issue. Kyle Gibson gives up power. 44.6% hard hit percentage. 267 expected batting average. But in the last 15 minutes, Nolan Gorman got removed from that baseball game. So Nolan Gorman is by far the best left-handed bat who could create some havoc here for Kyle Gibson. Part of me wants to fire this Baltimore money line as soon as I get off this program. I don't know if I'm going to do it here, mainly because Kyle Gibson I don't respect nearly as much as some of these other pitchers, although we've been backing him on the road, mainly because of the Baltimore lineup and the numbers that we get from the other side. So I think we just kind of stay away. Drew Rom had really good stuff at the AAA level, so maybe he starts to find some of that form. Hasn't been there lately. Really low X fit there at AAA, but not going to be a, a, a play for me in that regard. And that's where I just kind of think if I do anything, I'd be looking at the over. I'd shade towards the over. But now without Nolan Gorman, this play looks even worse than it did before, like maybe by 0.15, 0 0.2. Positional player, one individual positional player, unless they're Tawny, unless they're Trout, unless they're Judge. Like, they're not going to move the line that much in the aftermath of it. But hasn't moved yet. Maybe we are proactive and just stay away from this and jump on the Baltimore money line. That shouldn't surprise anybody. It's our team. The Washington Nationals taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. And my God, my God. CBD. CBD. This is this is nightmare fuel. Just no. I will not talk about this game, nor will I blink for the rest of this segment. Let's get ourselves out of here and run as fast as we can. Run, run. You do not want to be here. I don't want to watch this. Don't go to attend this baseball game. Stay away as long as you can. Just lean. The entire game is a lean. The lean is a game. It's a lean. I can't blink. Okay, I had 
with tears in my eyes, which will be weird to some of you who just like skipped the last game because you're like, hey, it's Washington and Pittsburgh. Hopefully that makes sense to you because like, again, two teams that do not matter that are going to just put out filth. If you want to know if I do anything there, hit me up on X at Eric Lindquist. Happy to let you know if I end up firing anything up. But this is a game that I want to fire something up. I need to fire something up, but I haven't fired anything up. And we have the lines. We have all the things and Spencer Strider on the mound against Christopher Sanchez. And this should speak to how strange of a spot this is. Christopher Sanchez, you're not getting better than plus 160 to back against Strider. And then the Atlanta side, you're getting minus 175. And it's like, hey, that should be an autoplay, right? Wrong. We're starting to see some issues with Spencer Strider. And it, it's kind of a strange phenomenon because the hard hit hasn't gone completely nuts here of late. But he's now given up six earned and four earned with two homers couple more walks the strikeouts are down pitch counts up i think it's a little bit worrisome I think it's a little bit problemsome so spencer strider i don't know what to make of it he still has a 3.83 ra 1.09 whip and has the highest k rate out of any starting qualifying pitcher in baseball but i don't feel good about it going up against a murderer's row of lefties considering some of these issues that he started to walk into hits are up contacts up just not getting as many chases as what you'd expect. My nose is itching. Maybe I should get some Allegra D in my life. I need some Allegra D right now. Maybe don't do bits that are stupid. Eric, how about that? A no blink bit? What are we doing here? But Christopher Sanchez on the other side, he's got some case stuff too. Not Nobody has case stuff relative to that as Strider. But Southpaw Sanchez... I kind of like what we've seen from him, 22.8% K rate. And there are times where this sinker change-up combination plays pretty live to teams that are a little bit different here. But again, Strider's minus 175 here. I feel like this should have been an auto play, but with Schorber, with Harper, with all these pieces there on the Philly side, with Trey Turner starting to actually be a human being functioning in society again, I don't really want to be that. I want to bet this. I can't believe that I'm not. But I'm going to pass Atlanta money line. If you want to feel better about yourself and fade me in a spot that I absolutely feel like I should be betting that projects out pretty decently well, and yet I'm not putting on the card. There's 15 games. We have plenty of spots. This would be the spot. Atlanta money line leaning that way, but it will not be on the card unless this drops below minus 170. Proud of myself for it being semi-disciplined there when it comes to Strider. I still think about it, but let's move ourselves on to Mr. Phillips, Captain Phillips. I'm the captain now going up against Eduardo Rodriguez here and pretty positive that Eduardo Rodriguez is lamenting the fact that he didn't go to LA. I'm still so confused by that. The Dodgers want you. The goal in baseball, make a lot of money. I guess staying loyal to Detroit, not wanting to move your family or not wanting to go to LA. I'm not sure. It's it's a very strange situation. But Eduardo Rodriguez has been awesome this season. 24.1% K rate, 386 expected slugging, everything across the board. Looks pretty, pretty solid for him. And then Connor Phillips, for those who don't know him, the guy came from absolute obscurity. Absolute obscurity. He gets called up here. He's had all of one start. It didn't go all that well. Four and two thirds, five, earns, uh, five earned runs given up with two homers. But he had seven strikeouts, which kind of led me down the path of like, do we still feel somewhat okay trying to make this a thing? Looked into his Louisville Bats numbers, 1.56 whip in 40 and a third innings. And well, the strikeout stuff was still above a K per nine, but like, it's not going to carry over in that kind of a way, especially if that whip is still going to be there. Again, 4.69 at the AAA level in Louisville, not even in the PCL you're probably not very good. And if you're not very good, when you start playing hitters that are of major league quality, especially the good ones, you give up some contact. And similar to what we did with Torkelson, I saw he got a single in the first inning on the play that we ended up on, plus 125. If we're going to get something similar, even against a righty, yes, not even against the lefty, but I think we want to be backing Torkelson yet again on one of these hitter props against a little bit of an unknown. Connor Phillips in that outing struggled to righties. He had a 561 expected ISO. Again, it was one start. So 561, I would normally freak out, flip out, be dramatic, do all the things that I normally do if I saw that kind of a number attached next to a name. But I'm not because it's one out. Okay. I kind of want to be. 
automatic anyway. But a 219 expected ISO for Spencer Torkelson, 294 BABIP, and a 16.1 degree average launch angle with 17 homers against righties on the season. He's still pretty good. Give me plus money again, I dare you. In Detroit, Spencer Torkelson, feel like running this one back. Hopefully we hit it. Hopefully we hit it. Again, he's got one through four innings. I just looked it up. He's one for two on the day. Hopefully we can get ourselves one more single from him and then double gets it done here. Plus money attached to that against a struggling guy. Triple A level. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're also going to do this. Sign you up at Caesar Sportsbook right now if you haven't. Here's why. When you shop for your lines, you're already doing the easiest thing that you possibly can to improve your betting performance. If you're like, oh, I've just been struggling of late, I can't get things right, and you're only betting at DraftKings or you're only betting at FanDuel, guess what? The best thing you can do to improve your chances at success are shopping for the best lines at multiple books. I don't care if it's Bet365 and Caesars or uh, Bet BetMGM or wherever else you want to put your money. Just put it in multiple places so that when the best line shows up, you can take advantage of it. This is especially important in the NFL where the numbers are also going to be different. A lot of times there's uniform movement across books when it comes to MLB. Not so much at NFL. Some teams, or sorry, some books are going to make stands on certain teams, have a half point here, a half point there. And you know what? That adds up big time over the course of an NFL season. So if you want to improve your game, sign up at Caesar Sportsbook, but that's not it. You also see beautifully on your screen. Bet $50, you're going to get $250. Now, that's paid out in five $50 bonus bets, one immediately, four every single Monday for the next four weeks. So that's 250. Look at me doing math, friends. It's fantastic stuff. Check out Caesar Sportsbook down below at the link. Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. That's it. Five bonus bets. There's no other bit. I, Ichi ni sanshi guruku. It's Japanese. Ichi ni sanshi gu. There we go. I had to stop at gu. It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Continuing on with the picks. Here we go. Producer Jacob, one, two, three, four, five. Daddy needs a new bicycle. And this is something that I thought about locking. We only have one lock on the card. And wouldn't you know it, it's the last game of the night again. Oh, but I really thought long and hard about locking this one. I really, really did. But you know what? There's a part of me. It would be killed if I backed Kikuchi in this kind of a nature coming off of 2022. So here's how I'm handling it. Jordan Montgomery, Yusai Kikuchi, two guys that are kind of getting it done in different ways. Kikuchi, he has the strikeouts. Jordan Montgomery has strikeouts at times, but pretty much just limiting some of the hard contact. Really good stuff that we've seen from him all season long. Do you see where I'm getting at with this one? <laughs> Smell what the rock is cooking. It's like a vampire version of Rock. That was pathetic. Anyway, Jordan Montgomery, 257 expected batting average. This is like that TV show about The Rock's life that I just don't enjoy. I thought I would. I don't. Yusai Kikuchi on the other side, 41.4% hard hit percentage. Not ideal, but 25.8% K rate. As I said before, beautiful things. Are these both extremely dangerous lineups? Yes. Yes, they are. Very much so. But... Big thing for Kikuchi is Noah Dulles Garcia continuing to be in this lineup. He's on the IL. That bodes well against lefties, I think, going forward. You're going to get Tavares. You're going to get Jonah Heim switch hitter. Robbie Grossman's better from the right side than he is from the left side. But Corey Seager, you neutralize somewhat. He's still fantastic. Let's be serious. And then you've seen some strange stuff from like the Mitch Garvers and everything else. Been better against righties from time to time, and I don't quite understand it, but... I think Kikuchi has the kind of pedigree, the kind of stuff that we've seen throughout this entire season, that it's finally coming together for him, where he's limiting some of the hard contact at the times that he needs to, and he's getting the swing and miss when he needs to as well. That's why you're seeing the results start to take off for the first time in a long, long, long time. There it is. 3.57 ERA, 1.24 whip. Those are some of the better peripheral numbers than you'd expect. Also, haven't said his name a lot when it comes to betting against, and that seems strange to me. However, Jordan Montgomery on the other side, also pretty damn good. Bring it up all the time. The Harrison Bader trade is going to haunt the Yankees for at least a year until they buy everybody over in the offseason, and they'll be just fine. But Jordan Montgomery, until that point is somebody that they definitely missed out on. 257 expected batting average, not ideal, but 6.4% walk rate limits it. 21.3% K rate, not really getting the swing and miss. 
But my God, does he know how to pitch? And it's just showing up time and time again. 3.62 ERA for himself. So two guys that have great ERAs as a result of their process, as a result of doing things just a little bit differently. And both of these are dangerous lineups. But we're getting a nine. There's a nine on the board. So it says eight and a half. That's at the majority of books. But if you look carefully, if you look closely, friends, there is a nine hanging out, or at least there was a second ago at BetMGM because I hammered it. Thought about locking it. When I say hammer, it was a half unit play, and I thought about locking it and putting another half. But in the meantime, eight and a half or nine. Happy for the under of either of it if it starts flip-flopping, flippy-floppy, doing whatever, eight and a half. That's the prevailing number, so that's what's going to be on the graphic, and that's what we're going to roll with, and I still like it at that number for a half unit. But nine, nine was a borderline lock. So if it moves back there somehow, some way, yay for you, smash it. We got my guy, Zach Gallen, on the mound going up against the New York Mets here. And uh, let's just start with Gallen here because I think he's the known quantity. There's a couple of options that we have here from the Mets side. No, Carlos Carrasco has kind of put things into a flux. They've had Tyler McGill. He's not good. They've had lots of guys coming up. Again, they're just trying to get this season done and over with so that, you know, Steve can go back and buy everybody else. Hey, back to back, New York teams. It's good stuff. They're going to be so ridiculously good next year. They've learned. They've learned. Maybe also get the guys that you want at the deadline. Why are teams not as active at the deadline as they need to be? And the Mets, they their season was over at that point in time, but the Yankees could have put something together knowing Judge was going to be back after the break. It is what it is. Anyway, Zach Allen's fantastic. This guy... Cy Young caliber, wouldn't be surprised if he goes out and gets it done here this season. 46% hard hit percentage isn't ideal, but a 26% K rate. The barrels are just a little bit too high for me, but I think that's where we can kind of double dip. When I put my hand up on your hip, when I dip, you dip, we dip into our pockets, and we bet against Joey Lucchesi if this ends up being the guy who gets called up. Now, he's had a couple of starts at the big league level, and it's gone swimmingly better for him than in years past. 3.54 ERA, 1.29 whip, but he's been down at AAA now. He had one start in August. It's been a little bit of a concerning thing for him. I think they're just trying to like limit his innings at this point, bring him into spring training, hopefully develop him and have a fourth or fifth uh, back end starter going into next season to pair next to like whatever stud free agent they go out and get. And of course, they're number one. Could I sing our dude? But Joey Lucchesi, he's a lefty who kind of just does it a little bit differently as well. Not going to go overwhelm you in terms of strikeouts, but like they've been there so far this season, 22 and 28 innings at the big league level. So I don't know. Feels iffy. But if we get plus money or like minus 125 inside of minus 120 to back Arizona on the road against a lefty where they've been pretty good and they have lots of righties. and they're... Take a breath, Eric. Arizona, 6Ks for Zach Gallon. That's what we're looking at. And pairing it with the money line, I said it's a theme, baby. Three of those on the card that I am looking at, that I'm aiming at, I need better than minus 125 for Arizona money line. If that's not there, I'm only looking at the Gallon prop. And if the Gallon prop looks wild and it's six and a half or seven and a half or something stupid like that, we're probably staying away from it altogether. But those are three major things I want on your radar because they're pitchers I trust in these specific spots. Have you seen the watered down nature of this Mets lineup? Have you seen some of these watered down lineups we're starting to get? We're going to get three weeks to try to make take advantage of some of this money. So let's get it. Let's get that bread. I'm done talking. Five games to go. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as I have to check in on this game, the Boston game. Where are we at? It's 1-1, bottom of the fifth. Okay, I can breathe. I can breathe. Clark Schmidt. Schmitty, he's finally showing up on the mound after like two days of will he, won't he? And Vasquez ended up starting game one. We did not bet game one. And now game two, we are like all the chips in the middle on. So let's go. Going up against Tanner Houck here. I hope you can see how Tanner Houck has got nearly as good as Cutter Crawford. Especially by, what, we're getting a four cent difference? Like, that's absurd. Now, to be fair, the Yankees lineup extremely watered down for game two, as was the Boston lineup. Rafael Devers sat in that afternoon session, although I like a lot of their AAA prospects that they called up better than a lot of the Yankee ones working through the numbers. Maybe that won't be long-term because the Yankees do have a decent farm system, but, like, just throwing it out there. It was really, really watered down. Yankees... They're starting to give some guys uh, some run that are, hmm. but Clark Schmidt, 
This is not the guy. Talked about him three days in a row. Gives up lefty power. I'm not even going to get into it because I'm sure you've heard the whole spiel. So Tanner Houck, that's primarily who we're going to focus on here in this segment. I can't go crazy in this spot the same way that I went absolutely nuts with Cutter Crawford, but 44.1% hard hit percentage, 21.2% uh, K rate. Those aren't good, but he limits walks, 6.9% barrel percentage. And I do expect the A team stuck in her daydreams, been this way since 18th. Shout out Ed Sheeran, Boston Red Sox, get Devers in the lineup, Cassis in the lineup, Connor Wong probably catching again, maybe. It's a back to back, you don't know. Alex Verdugo back in the lineup, Yoshida in the lineup. Those are all guys I expect to be there. Lefties against Schmidt, going to be troublesome. Going to be troublesome. So Tanner Houck, friends. Ooh, 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 ooh. My God, my God. Let's bet some things. Just a like. I said not going crazy. I was setting it up like I was going to go crazy. I didn't mean to do that to you. The spot that I've been looking forward to the absolute least on this card because my spreadsheet did a thing. And now this is in the hindsight situation because Tuesday, Oakland beats Houston. Wednesday, they just put up three in the first inning against Justin Verlander. So maybe I'm not as crazy as I look because, well, this was processed two hours before any of that happened. So I want to throw it out there. Paul Blackburn going up against Hunter Brown. I am not the biggest Hunter Brown fan. I do think he was a phenomenal prospect coming into the bigs, and you never know what you're going to get. I think he could still have that ceiling down the line, but right now, there are some concerning numbers that we have for him. A 44% hard hit percentage, a 9.9% barrel percentage, albeit with a 26.9% K rate against a team that we already know loves to strike out. 25.1% K rate against righties, just an 89 WRC plus, third highest mark in baseball that strikeout rate is. So uh, not good, not good in that regard. But you show me those first two numbers next to any pitcher and you tell me that they are minus 275, I flat out will not have it. Now, there are iterations of this Oakland lineup where if it shows up, I'm going to want to throw up. I would prefer that we didn't have Tony Kemp in this lineup, although for strikeout prevention, I understand why they do that and put him at the top of the lineup. But I want to see Rooker and Noda and Gellop and Seth Brown and Shane Langliers, and I want to see the normal guys in this lineup up and down one through five and just keep Tony Kemp at the back half of the lineup. That would be epic. Just for run creation standpoint. Again, I understand why they do it. It's just not my favorite thing. But let's talk Black Paul Blackburn here because he's got a 32.5% hard hit percentage with a 5.4% barrel percentage. That is drastically better than what we're looking at from Hunter Brown. So just saying, what can Brown do for you? Not a whole hell of a lot if he's giving up hard contact. And Paul Blackburn doesn't. He also has a 23.1% K rate, but he also plays for a baseball team that doesn't exactly want him going out and throwing 104 pitches like he did three starts ago. That's why we saw him down to 86 and 87 pitches the last two. But it sets up for bullpen opportunity, and we already know this Houston lineup is freaking good. But we're getting better than 2-1 to one to try to find out if Paul Blackburn can be... Because right now, if you told me I had to have one game to save my soul, I take Paul Blackburn over Hunter Brown, which is a wild thing to say. Does not speak to their ceilings, because Hunter Brown's ceiling is way higher but that's not today. That's not the day that we're betting. We're betting on Wednesday. And sure, this bet loses more than 50% of the time. There's no question about it. It loses better than 40% of the time, or sorry, than 60% of the time, other way around. But when you're getting this kind of a price, this was going to be a lock, but I have amended it because, because I don't want to hear from you. Oakland Moneyline, like, like only because if I lock this and lose, I will never hear the end of it. It says it in the corner. Next up, we have Kansas City. We have the White Sox. Alec Marsh on the bump taking on Mike Clevenger and the White Sox. And good Lord almighty, we've been betting Kansas City a ton. And this is kind of where that train stops. I ended up on Cleveland plus one and a half on Tuesday. You really never know. I'm going to throw some curveballs in there. But Alec Marsh said this last time, but he's 0-8 on the season, which doesn't mean a lot. Record doesn't mean a lot, but 5.95 ERA with a 1.63 whip and no ability outside of being able to spike strikeout upside from time to time. 
That, my friends, is worrisome. He's got a 494 expected slugging, 373 x roll, but not very good. And Mike Clevenger avoids the hard contact. Dras uh, eerily similar to what we just talked about there with Paul Blackburn. 34.5% hard hit percentage for Clevenger, 7.3% barrel percentage, albeit with a lower K rate, 20.7% K rate on the season. So, Mike Clevenger. Think we might be looking at backing him here. The White Sox also the better pen between the two. Kansas City, uh, as much as we've been trying to find some offense from them and taking them as dogs here, it's mainly behind the likes of, well, starting pitching that isn't named Alec Marsh. So the White Sox, going to be a lean here until we get a price and the official news that Alec Marsh is starting, but he should be. He lines up to be the starter. So Chicago money line, lean, want to see the price. Said I had a play from this one, although it is a prop, and some of you don't want those props. Although, you know, sorry, I just keep hitting home runs. My fault. Oh, they're sucker bets, Eric. No, if they're grading out as positive EV. I'm going to put them on the card. It's not that hard. Anyway, Braxton Garrett on the mound. It's going to be Colin Rhea more than likely, but not official word from the Milwaukee side of that one. And Colin Rhea is really bad. That was not good. I don't even have anything to say about that. I'm ashamed. Braxton Garrett's pretty good, though. 3.82 ERA, 1.16 whip. But this is really all to do with uh, Mr. Colin Rhea. We need to see a price here, too, because Miami could be a fun one. But over the course of the last however long, Jazz Chisholm has been disappointing to this Miami team, which is wild because I think that they've exceeded expectations, although they've always had a good starting rotation. Sandy Alcantara on the IL doesn't exactly help things and, you know, disintegrated for most of this season. Reverted or degraded. What is the word that I'm looking for? He valued himself. He reduced himself. Downgraded. While I work through all of my problems in life, we have Jazz Chisholm here. He's been disappointing here to this team as well, but there is hope. A 233X ISO against righties. A 367 BAPIP is unsustainable, but the 12.6 degree launch angle better than he has against righties. And 14 homers. This is his preferred side. Probably bad in cleanup. Probably a good spot in a decent ballpark. Why wouldn't we look at Jazz Chisholm here? Better than plus 350 puts him on the card. Think he's going to be on the card based on historical pricing. That's how I do this stuff. There's a method to the madness, friends. Jazz Chisholm to Homer. Let's get ourselves to the last game of the night. Our lock and get out of here. Producer Jacob is my savior. Regressed. The word I was looking for is regressed. Blue. The goddamn pen is blue. Hmm. Royal Blue. Now I want to watch Liar Liar. Blake Snell going up against Ryan Pepio. My God. What are we doing with the nine total here? Blake Snell's been one of the best pitchers in baseball after a brutal first month and a half to his season. He has that dumb stat that I brought up the other day. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember? Some of you remember. Some of you weren't listening. You just skip ahead to the picks. And I get it. I get it. I talk a lot. 45 minute show. Places to go, things to do. Listen to it on 2X and really like bang your head against a wall. But Blake Snell, 2.52 ERA, 1.26 whip. But here's the thing. Over the course of 161 innings this season, he's given up 110 hits. That is insane. What? 58 innings pitched over his last 10, just 36 hits allowed. This is insane kind of stuff. He's had multiple games this season. He hasn't had a single game this season with more than eight. He only has one other game that's had seven or more hits. He is limiting guys to nothing on the offensive end. Now, the big problem he runs into from time to time are the walks. That's why he's at 1.26 whip, but he pitches around it with strikeout stuff, 31.1% K rate. So despite the 13.7% walk rate, things have been good. They've also been good for Ryan Pepio. In a very limited sample size, albeit here for the Dodgers starter, but a 22.2% K rate, 319 expected slugging, 22.7% K rate, and get this, a 2.7% walk rate, a 3.7% barrel rate. 
These are very good things. Put a period at the end of everything I'm saying. And then you get the Dodgers bullpen. You get the San Diego bullpen that's been better of. No, they haven't been good at all. But we are getting ourselves Blake Snell here for a majority of this. He's still pitching well into the hundreds. 109, 113, 103. Padres, they got no shot to make the playoffs. But they're going to just fight till the bitter end. And Blake Snell is going to just... Keep mowing dudes down, trying to win a Cy Young or do something. So there you go. Blake Snell against Ryan Pepio. I'm in love with this under. I understand it's in Los Angeles. I understand the potency of the Dodgers lineup. I understand what the potency can be for the San Diego lineup. I do not care. I do not care. I want the under of nine. I want to shoot it to the moon. I want to scrim it from the mountaintops. My favorite play of the day. And that does it for another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Head to that comment section below. Let me know how I look like a frat boy today in my polo and my hair and the no headphones and just no, just tell me your favorite picks on Wednesday. That's a way better idea. Check out Caesar Sportsbook only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Take advantage of that offer down in the video description box below. Thank you to producer Jacob. Glad you got to meet producer Jacob. He's a lovely fellow. He's a lovely lad. He can't wait for the Celtics season to start. You probably knew he was from Boston the second you looked at him. I did. It's like this guy, this guy. That's a Celtics fan. Okay, I'm going to leave now. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Wednesday.